A 17 year old Muslim girl has been reported as dead after she was assaulted by an individual who allegedly hit her with a metal bat. Now, this story is so devastating and it seems as though it was possibly a random act of murder. However, police are not treating this as a hate crime, although individuals who know more about this story indicate that they do feel that the individual attacked the 17 year old girl simply because she is a Muslim. Now, she and her friends were at a mosque and since it's Ramadan, they were leaving the mosque together to go get a meal. Of course, during Ramadan, there's no consumption of food during the day, that all happens at night. And so they were planning on heading out to an IHOP to eat and that was when this terrible person approached them and started the attack. Now, according to accounts from police and a mosque official, a group of four or five teens were walking back from breakfast at IHOP early Sunday when they were confronted by a motorist. All but one of the teens ran to the mosque where the group reported that the girl had been left behind. The girl is Nabra. Uh, here's a photo of her, uh, graphic one, and again, just an innocent 17 year old girl. And to be quite honest with you, what I found interesting about the story is even though she was celebrating Ramadan, it was more of a social uh, thing for her. She wasn't really all that religious and she didn't wear uh, a headdress often. Um, she only did it because it was Ramadan. And many think that she was targeted or the group of girls were targeted specifically because of the fact that they were wearing the headdress. Now remains thought to be the girls were actually found at 3 p.m. Sunday in a pond. The girl's mother said detectives told her that Nabra was struck with a metal bat. Fairfax County Police identified the man charged with murder in her death as Darwin Martinez Torres of Sterling, Virginia. And here is his mugshot. Luckily, he is in custody. Police arrested him after they said that they saw him near the scene looking suspicious. But we don't have many details as to why they don't believe that it is a hate crime. We don't have details as to why they are tying him to this crime. All we know is that a 17 year old girl, an innocent 17 year old girl lost her life for absolutely no reason at all. And it's a, it's an incredibly tragic story. Yeah, it's a small community outside of Washington DC. And it's not one that is associated with this kind of violence and certainly not with any kind of religious violence. And I know that they, as you say, they've exercised restraint as far as calling this a hate crime. But it's sort of very much because it is Ramadan and because as Anna says, she was dressed in traditional garb. It's it's tough not to at least have that in the back of your mind. In any case, this is by all accounts a fairly peaceful community and even their family was sort of the source of so many congregants hanging out, having fun. It only makes it tragic that by all accounts, she was really sort of a creature of real light and life. You know. Uh, it's it's a it's a sad sad story. I'm curious though to why they have came out and said that they're not investigating it as a as a hate crime without any further details that we know of yet. Because usually when you come out with something like that uh, to the press, it seems like you've got other motive that you want to make sure is going to be held above that. I, I I'm surprised that they've made that firm statement without even saying that it's possible that right. it could be investigated as a hate crime. Because from what the testimony from the friends, the testimony from the girl's father, who by the way. I want to go on a little quick side note. I read a piece on him recently that broke my heart outside where he said that he's going to go to the courtroom, he's going to look at this evil individual and say, why did you do this to my daughter? And then he's going to forgive him and leave it up to God to judge him. And that's the, you know, that's the Muslim community that's just, they're not a religion of peace, right? They don't care about anyone else, they just care about their own. No, that's how a father in this instance is trying to grieve over this situation. It's a horrific, horrific case. but. The testimonies from the friends and from what he's stating would at least lead them to believe that that needs to be investigated. Right. So I'm surprised why it's been ruled out almost. So again, this story just broke and we don't have all the details. The police are not being transparent, probably because they are in the middle of investigating it. Obviously, they have some information that we don't have. So I'm unsure as to why they're not treating it as a hate crime. And you know, the only thing that I do want to stay away from is speculating as to what's mm -hmm. really going on. 
um, because I don't think that that's a responsible way to cover the story. However, um, you know, the parents are convinced that this was a hate crime. Uh, in fact, according to the Washington Post, in conversations with detectives, the victim's mother said she was told the driver shouted at the teens, then threw glass beer bottles at them. Here's a quote from the mother. She says, I'm sure the guy hit my daughter because she's Muslim and she was wearing the hijab. The only thing in my head is, why did he do that to us? We're not bad people, he doesn't know us. Why did he ever do that? I don't feel safe at all anymore as a Muslim living here now. And I think, you know, considering what recently happened in Oregon on, you know, public transportation and, and, and some of the more extreme opinions that we're hearing or the extreme rhetoric that we're hearing about certain groups of people, particularly Muslims, you know, you have to keep in mind that rhetoric does matter. And rhetoric matters from both the right and the left. And and we just we're all getting caught up in the polarization, the fear, the fear mongering, the hate. And if you are a mentally stable person, you're unlikely to be influenced by that rhetoric to the point where it incites violence, to the point where you go out there and you do something violent. But keep in mind that not everyone is mentally stable, right? And so what you say matters and we just, we need to tone it down and we need to be careful. That's uh, all I'm saying. So true that, that, that the rhetoric is incendiary. But the, but the other point I really like that you made a reference to that the, the fact is the, the nature of this community isn't one of, of radicalism necessarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, the TYT audience knows, but it's in the shadow of that van tragedy in London. Yeah, I want to talk You'll remember about the yes. imam, you maybe even heard about it in the first hour if you're with us, uh, comes out and actually pulls the crowd off of the van driver. This is the guy who just drove into this crowd yeah. of Muslim worshipers. Mm -hmm. They're sitting there wailing on him, they're angry. He's just perpetrated this, this horrible thing. And the imam comes out and pulls them off of him because, again, he doesn't want that to be the, the, the to have any component in the day's events. Uh, and, and so it's really to your point, it's just a, it's a community that is not defined by this radicalism. And then there are more and more examples, unfortunately, in the shadows of these tragedies. The, and I wanted to go back to what Anna said. I think that's very important that we have to wait, we have to be bigger than rather than jump into conclusions. I think the the 30 to 35 minutes after any sort of attack happens on the internet is some of the worst that you'll see because everyone just wants everyone, to use it yes. to, as, as political mudslinging. But on the other side of it as well, uh, we need to start being more uh, transparent with what we are describing as terrorism. You just mentioned the attack yesterday. I was disgusted last night as I was on after it would be, had been announced that it was a terrorist attack deliberately uh, towards Muslims outside the mosque. The Daily Mail ran a ran a, a brief headline. Right? I think they corrected themselves later, but the brief headline says, "Clean-shaven white man held uh, like was was held afterwards." Now that was after it had already been described as it was an attack on on Muslims. So why all of a sudden was the man's appearance and his clean-shaven uh, appearance one of the the reasons why he was describing it? And it took me back to a New York Post article that I ripped apart not long ago for describing the the dapper individual who was in New York who committed the attack. On, on Timothy Coleman. It's just and, and a it's double standard in the way that headlines are written about specific groups of people, right? Yeah, so if you don't fit uh, what society has deemed the perfect model of a terrorist, yeah. which is a Muslim with dark features, well then you're not really you're not really a terrorist. <laughs> you might you might be a bad guy, but you are you clean shaven though? And, and are it, you dapper though? It happens. Because that matters. That matters. Of course it does. And there was <laughs> and, and there's and there's articles that I actually enjoy reading. There was one that I just called out recently on New York Daily News five minutes ago before I came in here. They said the Welshman who was in who committed the attack in London, the father of four, stop humanizing him. He's a terrorist, that's what he is. Call him a terrorist first and you wanna go into the details later because most people won't even read that. They'll just read it and they'll suddenly have this conception that I will guess he's not a terrorist then because he's a father of four and he committed this attack. It humanizes them, right? It's and it makes insane. them relate, relatable and so you can't, Look, if you are in the business of doing fair journalism, then you can't have that double standard. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if you're Muslim, doesn't matter if you're white. If you terrorize people, you're a terrorist. If you're running your van into a group of innocent individuals, you are a terrorist. Absolutely. So that's, that's what we're dealing with right now. And we will uh, give you updates on this story as it develops. I know what you're thinking, Cenk, what do I get if I'm a Young Turks member? Well, I'm glad you asked. Not only do you get the whole two hour show on demand anytime you want and free. But you get six podcasts on top. What are they? Join up, find out they're amazing. You're gonna love these shows. TYTnetwork.com slash join.